Today, I'm going to talk about color, and we're going to create a color wheel, and I want to show you guys how to use the color wheel to um, mix, not just mix colors, I mean, because many times you have a palette that has all the colors in it, you don't have to mix them, but I think it's very important to also maybe have minimal colors and learn to mix with minimal colors. Um, just so you can understand if you take yellow and purple and put it together, what happens? Um, I, I know that, you know, once you learn a little bit about color theory, you, it's, it stays with you. And the color theory, we're using watercolors today, but the same, um, the exact same thing can happen with acrylic. And I am going to do, I'm also going to do a color wheel and mix acrylic paints because acrylic paints are very different than watercolor. The way you apply acrylic in watercolor is completely different. Today's going to be watercolor. Um, I'm going to, we're going to create a wheel. Basically, I am providing you a blank wheel so you can kind of figure out how to, where to put the lines and everything. And I'm also creating, I also am providing a the actual colors themselves, these all obviously are not watercolors. This was done digitally. Um, I'm also going to provide how to mix the colors. We're also going to talk about tint, shades, and grays. So th in the beginning of this, the first part of it is, let's just go ahead and create this color wheel. I'm just using a paper plate. You just need something that's a, a circle because we're going to create a circle. Um, oh, and the paper. Um, the other thing about it is, is um, we have, this is just watercolor paper. I believe it's Strathmore. I usually use Strathmore watercolor paper. And um, so anyway, we're gonna do, we're just gonna get a paper plate or anything that's anything that's a circle because you're just creating a circle. And I'm, I'm using a paper plate because that's what I have. I want to try to make my my um, color wheel as large as possible on the page, so then I have lots of space to work. Now, the other thing about it was, is I we're not just going to create one like this, where we take the red and the green and the yellow to create all the other colors. On this demo, we're also going to look at the different tints. We use the paper plate to create the larger circle and then I just have this plastic container to put in the center. I'm going to create another circle. Make sure I'm trying to get it in the center as much as possible. And this is going to be my second circle. Okay, and the reason why we're doing the different circles um, will be clear later. We're going to create the colors and then we're gonna add water so you can see what happens when you add water to your watercolors. Um, and then I'm gonna, I just found another one that's a little bit smaller. Um, this is just one of my cups that I used for my paint parties. And it has two circles, which will be awesome. Put this in the middle as much as possible. And, and then one more. And then I'm going to go back and clean this up a little. I'm not always exact when I do stuff. All right. Then we're going to, if you see this color wheel, we are going to get a ruler and we're going to draw lines to divide up this circle. So try to find the center of the circle. The center of the circle is about right here. So let's that's where I'm going to draw the first line. And I am drawing with a pencil pretty dark so then the video can pick it up. That's the reason why I'm I'm drawing pretty dark. Okay. 
So you're going to do a crosshair, and then we need to divide them up again, not in the center. We're going to do, we've got to have two lines in here. Like I said, I'm not doing the math. I'm just, I'm an artist, and I am eyeballing it to put in, and they're, they're a little off. Wow, they're more off than I thought they were going to be, but oh well. Okay. Oh, I really messed that one up. Well, okay. Well, I just messed it up. That's okay. Um, okay, so we're going to do... Got to make sure you go through the center. In fact, I may do another one because this is... Karen, come on. You can do better than that. You're trying to find the center. As close as possible. Because you want to make sure that's in the center too. Okay. That's pretty good. <clears throat> Here is our... This... Here we have this color wheel. Now we need to figure out where the colors go. So if you see this, you know, if this is the color wheel that we did, the crosshair, the red is going to go right here. So this is going to be red. I'm going to write on here red just to make sure that we remember where we're going to put red. And then if you look at the crosshairs, if that's red, then this is going to be blue. There's going to be three. You're going to count down one, two, three, and the fourth one is going to be blue. So we were here, one, two, three. This is going to be blue. This one's going to be blue. And the same thing over here, we're going to count from here. There's the red. Remember, here's the crosshair. Here's the red. You're going to count one, two, three, and then there's the yellow. So there's going to be three colors in between yellow and red. One, two, three, and then this is yellow. Okay? So we have the yellow, blue, and the red. All right, so now we have um, all of our lines on here. We have the red, the blue, and the yellow. Let's start adding paint. The paintbrush I'm using is a size 8. It's just a round brush. The paint that I'm using is just the Prang, um, just Prang watercolor. You can use anything you want to if you would like. Um, another one that I use is called the Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton, it's a, just a travel version. It has red and it has blue and it has yellow. Um, I, I love to mix and we're going to be mixing the colors. Uh, and on the Windsor Newton, the mixing area is very, very small because it's a travel version. So I'm not using the Windsor Newton today. Um, I also have a very large palette that I use. Just to let you know, I have a really, really large palette that I use that's Windsor Newton. All of this is Windsor Newton. We do have places to, um, um, to mix color. But for this demonstration, I am going to be using the Prang watercolor. Just because it's very inexpensive, if you know, you're just getting started and you want something that's inexpensive, this, this uh, Prang watercolor is really nice. Um, okay, and then there's a lot of space here to mix colors because we're going to mix the colors. We're not just going to grab the colors out of the pods that are here. We want to actually mix the colors so then we can learn what, how, how everything mixes together and how it all works. So I'm going to start out at the top with red. This is the red that I'm using. I have gone in with a squirt bottle and squirted all of the, the little um, squirted all of the little pads of paint so then um, they're ready to, to use.
Okay, so the next step here is <clears throat> normally I go around the outside, but we're actually going to go down. And what I'm going to be doing is taking this red paint, and then I'm adding a little water. The thing about watercolor that's different than all the other mediums is the paper is already white. So you want to leave the paper white if you want white. If you want a light color, then you take whatever the color is that you want. Like maybe you want pink. We're going to create pink right here. Different levels of pink by adding water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paint and I'm going to add it here. And then I have fresh water. I'm, I'm going to get my um, paintbrush, I'm painting, I'm dipping it into the water and I'm adding water to it. So then when I come over here, got to make sure I add enough water. This should be a little lighter. We want it to be lighter than the one above it. When you add water to the paint that you have on your brush, it will make the paint lighter. See how this is a little darker than this one. So the next step is we can go on down here and add a little more water to our brush and add more water and may need even more water for this one. Yeah, see this is almost too dark. It needs to be lighter. So what I'm doing is taking the brush, I'm dabbing it on my paper towel to soak up a little bit of the water. Then I'm going back into the water, not into the paint. I'm going to go back into the water and I'm going to pick up some of this so it'll be lighter. You want this one to be lighter than the one above it. So you can see that if you add water and you take away some of the color, you get an, you get it, it's lighter. This is going to end up being pink. This is a darker pink and then there's your red. So we're going to go one more step and I'm going to go back into my water. I'm going to go back into my water. I'm going to dab it onto my paper towel and then we're going to paint it one more time. So I'm I'm this this has barely any color at all. And there's our pink. Now what we didn't do is we did not add white. You know, if you look at a praying watercolor, there's white here. When you're using watercolor, the best way to get the colors that you need are the the lighter colors is to add more water, less paint, and not use the white. And I'll show you later what happens when we add the white, just so you can understand this. Um, there, there's two different theories, to add white or not to add white. And the traditional way to do watercolor, you don't add white, the, 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 the um, paper's already white. So if you're, let's say, painting a panda, then you draw out your panda, and whatever is white on that panda, you don't paint it at all. And that's kind of what the theory is that we're working on right here. So now we've done the red. We're going to let that dry, and we're going to go over to the yellow. Now I'm going to go into my water, and I'm going to rinse my brush really, really, really good. I want to make sure I rinse my brush, get all the red out of it that I possibly can. <clears throat> so then when I go into the yellow, it's pure yellow. So I'm going to go into my yellow and get some yellow paint and start painting yellow here in my yellow spot. I'm dipping back into the paint. I want this to be a really, really rich yellow color. 
because we're going to do the same thing we did over here, over here, only with yellow. So, what do we do? With the next step is to try to get some of the paint off by dipping it onto the paper towel. You're going to go into the water, and then we want to add yellow right here. It's going to be lighter than the other one because we added water. Of course, I did touch this, so this is going to bloom into this a little bit, which won't hurt. I don't know if I got enough paint. I don't know. We'll have to go back and see. You may have to adjust. You know, sometimes you have to adjust when you, you know, you're doing this. This is going to be a great reference to have for the rest of your life on how to look at colors and work what you're trying to solve. We're going to do another, um, there's another process that we're going to go through um, in our after we do the color wheel and after we do the tints and the tints, shades, and grays. But, you know, we'll get there in a minute. <laughs> so, okay, so now the next step is I went in and I need just a little bit of yellow and I need a lot of water. So I'm, I have, I dipped back into the yellow, I dipped into my water, and I'm dabbing it a little bit on my pay, on this paper towel. And this already has a little splotch of water on here, which is actually good because I, I might have too much paint. But you can see we're just kind of playing around with this to get these three levels. Now I'm going to go back and take some of the water off. I'm dipping back into my water for my final little swatch of water and color to make it even lighter. And we, these two are really close. This, um, so I think I need to add a little more color to that one. So I'm going to go back into my yellow and get it a little bit more on my paintbrush. And I'm adding just a little bit of yellow to this swatch. just to make it a little darker. And the more I dab on there, it's still wet. I'm dabbing on there. It's adding more color, a little bit of more, a little more color. So I'm going to go in and clean my brush, dab it, and maybe I need to take up a little bit of water here so this is a little lighter. So then we can have three different shades. This is so much easier to see the shades on the red than on the yellow. I may actually go back into this and add more color to make sure it's nice and solid yellow. This is the darker yellow, right? So we're going to add more just so it has a good, there's a good gradation of color. So play around with it a little if you need to. Um, Not really sure what I need to do to make it a little different. Like I said, it's a little more difficult to do with yellow than red. Red is just, it's just easier to see. Now we're going to go on to blue and we're going to do the blue one. All right, so there's blue. We're going to do the same process. I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to dab a little bit of the blue here. I'm going to go into my water, so there's water on here, and I'm going to put the paint, and here is the second layer. It may need a little more color than what I have on here. I have to add a little bit of color. Then I'm going to just touch my paper towel. I'm going in with water again, and we're adding a third. I'm 
I'm touching my paper because there's too much water. I'm going to dab up some of the water so this is a little lighter. Basically the same process that we did on the other colors. And we're going to do that for the whole thing. So then I'm going to dab water and this is the last one. It may look too much like the second one. So I'm going to dab onto the paper towel and go in and take up color and water to make it lighter. There. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going on to the next step. The next step is starting to mix. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go back up here. Whoops, that wasn't good. <laughs> okay, you, see I splattered? Get a dry or a um, clean paper towel and just dab it. And it, it cleans it up quickly. It's so amazing how you just dab it really quick and it doesn't... The water, watercolor paper is different. Watercolor paper, um, it takes a few minutes for the water to soak into the paper. So if you do make a mistake, then all you have to do is get a clean paper towel and dab it or get clean water and dab it and it cleans it up really quickly. So that was a great example of it. Okay, so the next step, like I said, is what we're gonna do and we are going to start um, mixing colors to create all these other colors. Um, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is, I already have red here. We're gonna go back to the red since the red is starting to dry, and I'm gonna get red and put it here on our palette, and I might even mix it in two different areas, two different places, put some red here, because the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add blue to create these three colors. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of blue to get this color, I'm going to add a little bit more blue to get this color, and then a little bit more to get this color. The best way to mix colors, whether they are watercolor or acrylic, is to start with the lightest color first, and then get the darker color and add it just a tiny bit of it, whatever it is, to get the result that you want or need. Put red on my palette. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to get this color by adding blue. I have red on my, on my paintbrush, and if I go dip into the blue, blues darker than red mess up the blue. Now if I have red on my paintbrush and I dip it into the yellow, the yellow is a lighter color, it's going to change the whole thing. The whole pad of paint will be changed. So because red is darker than yellow. So when you're working with watercolor and when you're working with different types of paint, always remember that the darker color will overcome the, the, the lighter color. So you have to be extremely careful when you're mixing lighter and darker colors. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into the blue. I still have red on here. I'm going to go into the blue and just get a tiny bit of blue and I'm going to take that blue and I'm going to mix it with this red. So I think I need a little more. It's almost too red. Go in and mix it. And here is really close to this color and I'm going to get this. Um, it's a, I don't know, it's a violet color. And I'm going to go ahead and paint it in right here. It has a little bit of blue. It has red, a little bit of blue. And it looks like I'm not going to have enough paint. And I need to continue to mix up a little more of this color to create to paint right here. So I'm going in and getting some water. I'm gonna go back to the red. I'm gonna get a whole bunch of red and add that red again. I'm scraping the paint off 
of my brush. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm scraping the paint off into this mixing tray from this red. And then I'm going into the blue again. I'm grabbing some blue and then I'm going in and mixing it. And this time I put too much blue in it. So this is not that color now. This is like almost the next color. If you saw how much I didn't, I got way too much blue. So really this goes here and we still have to go back and get that color. So I'm going to go on and use this color while I have it mixed. And add it to our color wheel. So while we still have this on our brush, we're going to do the same process that we did with the other paint is we're going to go and we're going to add water to it to create the tints of the all of these other tint, the tint of the other color. So we're going to go in, dip in the water just like before, and we're adding water to it and it looks like it has too much paint so I'm going to dab it onto my paper towel so then when I go back it picks up some of the color and some of the paint and some of the water to thin it out and then we're doing the same process we're going to go in, dab it, go in to get water add some more here for the next tint and it um, it may be too dark, so I'm going to dab it onto my paper towel and go in and pick up some of this color and some of this paint to get the tint that we're looking for, and we're going to do it one more time. You're going to dab onto the paper towel, go into the water, and so this is going to be the lighter one. So I'm dabbing onto the paper towel and then going back in and picking up some of the water and paint. And so we have another one right here. This is another um, red, purple, violet color, which is kind of fun. Okay, so now we still have to go back and create that. In order to get this color again, what do you think I need to add to this? What do you think I need to add to this? I probably need to add more red. Or I need to take this and add, add it to this other red that I already have. So I'm going in and getting some water. I'm going to pick up this paint and this color. And I'm going to add it to this red that I have next door to it. To get closer to this. To get closer to this other color. This other purple that we have created. Red. Red purple. Purple red. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, so there it is. There's that color again. I picked up the violet color. I added it to the red and we are back to this color that we had created. But remember, we didn't have enough of it to complete the exercise. So we had to mix it again. But now we know how to mix it and how to get to this color that we want. So now I have the color on my paintbrush and then we're going to go through this process of um, adding water to the paintbrush and creating a tint, the next tint of this purple. I'm going to dab it onto the paper towel to pick up more of the color and tint. And I'm going to go into my water again to create the next one. I'm going to dab it onto my, my paper towel again because we're picking up some of the color. And then we're going to go back into the water to get the last one. All right. So there we have, we have red, and then we've taken the blue, 
and mixed a tiny bit of blue to create that that red purple color I probably need to find the exact names of all these colors and then um, and then we went in with blue again and created a darker one and now we're gonna take this color that we've created which is this violet color and we're gonna add more blue to it we have to make more of it because there's not enough in that right here but we know how to make it now um, and then we're going to add it to our palette we're gonna add it to our um, color wheel and add it right here this is violet right here so now we need a blue violet which you, you, we need a little more of this so I've got to try to figure out how to grab enough red and put the paint in here I'm picking the paint up into my brush and I am pushing down on my brush to create more paint over in the next in this next um, mixing tray I'm going to go in with blue and we've got to create the violet that was there before and then we're adding extra blue there's that violet that I had before and now I am going to add I'm trying to get enough paint over there I'm trying to get enough paint here so then I can go in with the I'm gonna add more blue to get this um, blue violet color so here we have a new color the blue violet and we're going to add the blue violet right here So I'm trying to add enough paint in here where this is dark enough. You want it to be, you know, dark enough that when we add water, then we can get the other tints. Of the color, you know, this blue violet color. So I'm tapping, I'm picking up more paint and I'm tapping on here to make this darker trying to make it a little bit darker okay so then what the next step is remember we're going to go in and get water on my brush and add a layer that's a little lighter because we've added water because the paper is coming through the color to make it lighter because we've made the paint thinner and then we're gonna tap on our paper towel get water and go to the next level the next tint of this violet blue violet color purple 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 love it And then we're going to take some of the water off. I mean, some of the water and color off with the with the paper towel. We go back into water again to add the last. Woo! That bloomed in together. So now we have to go in and pick up the water. In order to pick up the water, you've got to get the water out of your brush, and then you go in, and if you tap onto the paper you can pull up the water into your brush and it takes the water and the paint off of your paper. Kind of have some color there. These all kind of bloomed in together. So this isn't quite as dark as I would normally have it, but you can still see a gradation of tint. Even even though we did that, you know, even though it did bloom a little bit. 
Okay, so do the red and the orange, the red and the yellow to create the oranges. So we want to make sure that when we start out with yellow, remember when you're starting out with yellow, you're going to do you're going to do red and yellow to create orange. And remember when you're starting out, you got to make sure that you have a clean palette because as you can see, um, when I'm messing around in this, I don't know if you can see there was already paint in my palette tray. So I'm trying to scrub with my brush to kind of get some of the color out of it because that's not what we want in our painting. <clears throat> so I'm going to get a clean paper towel. Oh. I sloshed a little. And you don't want to slosh onto here. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what I'm trying to do is go in here and try to clean this out to the best of my ability to make sure that when we put yellow in there, it doesn't mix with the other colors. That's purple. And if I had put it in, if I had put yellow in there to create these colors, it wouldn't have turned out because we have, you know, the wrong color on there. And it looks like I've gotten... A little bit of red on there. Don't want to do that either. Okay, so I've cleaned it up a little. This is clean, and now I'm going to get my brush. I'm going to dip it into the really clean water and clean the brush really well. Got to make sure we clean the brush really, really well. Of course, I have. It looks dirty. It's not as is not really dirty water. It's the container. But anyway, so I'm getting the water, putting it in this this palette right here, put in, putting it in this little mixing tray. God, there's still color in there. I've scrubbed and scrubbed and trubbed trying to get that clean. Okay, that's going to have to be clean enough at this point. Okay, I'm going to go in to my yellow. I'm picking up a whole bunch of yellow. We need a lot of yellow. Now, I do realize that we already have orange and we have green and we have all these colors that we're mixing, but we're going to literally mix to get the color so you can see what happens when you get the yellow and mix it other than just going straight into um, the orange and using whatever's here because I think mixing is very important. If well, While you're painting, you may have yellow on there and you may have another color that blooms into it. You need to know what happens when those two colors mix together. And all of this is practice, you know? You, you're, you know, it's all about a practice and everything. So we're starting out with yellow. Remember, yellow is the lighter color. So you want to start out with yellow first. And then you, um, we're going to be going into red and picking up some red. We're going to use the same red that we use here, which is, which is right here. So we're going to go in here and pick up some red. You don't need much, which I think I probably picked up too much. So I'm going to wipe some of it off. So now I'm going to go in here and mix it. And as you can see, it made an orange. So this orange, um, this is a yellow orange. Let's see, how, what would you call it? Yeah, yellow orange, I guess. So it's going to go right here. It almost looks like a mustard color. I don't know. I'm looking at it going, well, you don't want to put too much red in it because you've got to still do an orange here and an orange here. So It should look like this. It may not. I'm looking at it going, maybe I need to put a little extra red in it so it has a little more orange to it. And I have to play with it until it looks sort of like this color. And so this is what happens when you mix. When you mix the yellow and the red, this is the color that you're going to actually get. That's another reason why you buy watercolors that have all these extra colors. 
or you buy more than, you know, three colors of paint, three tubes of paint, red, yellow, you know, red, yellow, and blue, that's why you buy all the other ones. Because, you know, this isn't exactly the color. I mean, it's pretty close. But, you know, some of these other ones in the pal uh, these other ones that they have created might look better, might be prettier. But we wanted to make sure that we can, we know what happens when we mix these together. All right, so um, now we're going to go in and do the same process that we did before. We're going to add water. Dab our brush, add more water. Dab our brush and add more water. Dab our brush and I'm going to take up some of this so it's a little lighter. And I'm also going to take a little bit of this so it's a little lighter. And this didn't end up being as dark as I expected it to be. I kind of thought that would be a little darker. Ooh, that's a pretty camel color. <laughs> okay. All right, so the next step is to go back into our yellow. Because remember, it's the lighter color, so we're going to need more of it to create the other oranges. Right? We need more of it. Okay. So I'm going to go back into the red, and we want the red to be darker than this. I mean, the orange to be darker than this. But remember, we still need another one here. So, I think we need more yellow. All right, I don't know, let's see, is this a good orange? Might be a good orange. And like I said, you're just gonna have to play with it to make sure that you get it the color, get, in, get as close as you possibly can. It's all practice. The birds are singing outside my studio. <laughs> Pretty birds. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to get this yellow orange. We got lots of yellow and orange. I need to go in and get red. And we got to get it even darker. We need more paint.
water. Ooh, I had too much paint on there. I hope you're learning a ton here on my YouTube channel. Mixing watercolor is so much fun. Check out my other videos. Make sure you subscribe today so you don't miss the next video that's coming out. I will have a video out every single week. And if you want to check out my classes, there is a link below in the description. So what's great about this exercise is if you wanted to create a very pastel, very light colored pastel painting, then this is how you can figure out what you need. You need a lot of water and a tiny bit of a tiny bit of paint. A lot of water, tiny bit of paint. So this is another reason why we're going through this exercise so you can see what happens. Okay, so we're going to start back over here with yellow and go this direction because yellow is the lighter color. So we want to try to mix with the lighter color using the lighter color to the darker color. If you start over here, then it will take a lot of yellow to create the colors that you needed. So it's better to start with the light color and work toward the dark color. So I'm rinsing my my uh, brush is I'm going to go in here with my spray bottle and um, make sure that this center area is clean because that's where we're going to do the green. That's where we're going to see how it, when I did that all these other colors are in that are, are all in here. See how it all kind of moves together? I'm cleaning the inside of the mixing tray really, really good. So when we get in here and start mixing up our greens, they are as true as possible and free of the purple and the red. So then the greens will turn out more accurate. All right, we're gonna put a little bit in here. We're gonna go in, remember we're gonna start with the yellow. So, Got to put the yellow in here. Lots of yellow. All right, and so instead of just grabbing the green, we're gonna mix the green. So the next green is this lime looking color. So we wanna make sure, remember, you have a lot of yellow to create that lime color. Ooh, orange just got bled into that. So you don't want that to happen. Messed up the color, so I'm cleaning it and I'm starting over. We only need a tiny bit of blue, little bit of blue to create that lime color. I'm adding water, I'm cleaning my brush, I'm going back in and grabbing more yellow because we need lots of color. We have lots of paint. We've got to get this lime green, not too dark. Going in and get water.
that, I'm going to start on the next one. So we're going to dip back in the blue. We're going to add some more blue to this to make it a little bit darker. We're going to add a little bit more blue to create that more of a Kelly green. Looks like it needs to be a little darker. All right, the last one. So we, I rinsed my brush. I went back in to get some more of the of the yellow, and I'm going in with the blue, and then we're creating a, even a darker blue, but not pure blue. It's going to have some yellow in it, but it's got to be even darker than what we had before than this right here. I think it needs to be bluer. It invaded the other, <laughs> oops, it bloomed into the wrong one right there. <laughs>
Try to make that a tad darker. This even needs it feels like it needs to be darker. Or more blue, I guess, not really darker. All right, leave you there. Okay, so now you understand what you have to do to get all of these colors. You, you have to mix the color that you need, and then the more water you add, remember there's white paper underneath here, so the more water you add, the lighter it gets. Ta-da! Ta-da! We did it! <laughs> Ta-da! We did it! Oh, and this one. It was so much fun painting with you. I hope you learned a ton, and I'll see you in the next video.